right, unit six is dealing with growth policies. How do we demonstrate economic growth? We're talking about an increase in GDP. Now, there are lots of ways you can demonstrate this graphically. You can show on an ADAS model that you're sliding out along the horizontal axis. You can show it on a PPF. Let's say, for example, we're talking about a production possibilities front here. Normally, we'll see two very different products, maybe something agricultural and something industrial. Um, so let's go with potatoes and iPods. Now, the reason you have a PPF that's bowed outward is because these two products are not using a lot of the same resources. You know, you need fertilizer for potatoes. You're not growing iPods out in the field, thus you don't need fertilizer. The people who are trained to grow potatoes and to pick potatoes, probably not much use to you in the iPod factory. So, we have what's called increasing opportunity cost as we approach one axis or the other, because the line gets more steep as we move this way, it gets more flat as we go up. Okay? And you can tell that by the tangent lines at each of these points. So as we approach each axis, we have to give up more of one good to get more of the other. That's your opportunity cost, and that's how you can see it. Now, how do we represent growth on a PPF? What we have to show is that we can move the PPF outward. If we can achieve higher production of one product or both products, which would be ideal, then we have economic growth. So increasing GDP, PPF that moves out. Now, what are some things that can encourage growth to happen? You can invest, first of all, in human capital. Now, what does that mean? Your human resources are your labor. How can you invest in them? For example, you might pay for them to have additional training. You might um, give them some kind of an incentive to go out and get a higher education. Because more training and more education can give people more skills and make them more productive. So you can invest in your human capital. The next thing that you can invest in is your physical capital. Here we're talking about plant equipment. If you get um, you know, a better facility where it's easier for people to move around, where it takes less time, for example, to um, get resources from one end of a production line to another. Maybe you're investing in um, a setup that's more ergonomic. That would increase your productivity potentially, could increase a lot. The third thing that you can do and all these things really are related, is put money in technology. Here we're talking about investments in research and development, which can also give you better physical capital and help you utilize your people a little bit better. So in order to try to boost GDP, in order to try to boost your own production, you can put money in people, in your plant equipment, or in your technology. And all three of those things potentially working together can serve the purpose of increasing GDP and also pushing out the PPF. All right, one of the other concepts that shows up in Unit 6, and this is going to be really important when we do micro next semester, is the law of diminishing returns. Now, it's not just an idea, it's a law. If we have diminishing returns, your returns are what you get back out of your inputs. You put your inputs in, your outputs would be like your returns. You put your inputs in, you put your outputs out, you put your inputs in, and you... Sorry. All right. And if it's diminishing, then that means it's becoming less. So what that means is that as you keep continuously increasing one input, then you're going to have less of an increase in your output until 
it's going to level off and finally go negative, which is not good. The example that I always use for this is a car wash. Now, if we're talking about a car wash that's very labor intensive, um, then you have to have people available who are physically washing the cars. So let's say, for example, that we are trying to figure out the optimum number of people that we should employ at the car wash on a Saturday morning. Let's say we start with four. And let's say that if we have four people and they're all working, you know, as fast as they can, you know, or as fast as they're willing to show you that they can, um, then they're turning out how many cars in an hour? I don't know. I've average, never worked at the car wash. Cars. Let's say that they're doing, you know, eh, maybe six cars an hour. And then you go, well, hey, if we have that many guys, you know, doing this by hand or doing the detailing and stuff, and they can do six cars in an hour, then what happens if we have eight people? Or what happens if we have 12 people? Well, eventually, if you're not increasing any of your other inputs, you're not giving them more rags or more buckets or, you know, access to more sources of water, you just keep throwing more and more people at it, they're going to start tripping over each other until it's not going to be six cars per hour. It might only be two or three. And then maybe you end up with so many bodies in the way that you can't get anything done. That's the idea of diminishing returns. If you keep increasing your inputs, you don't necessarily keep getting more and more out of your production process. So what does this have to do with economic growth? Well, if you're only increasing one type of resource, let's say you only have, you know, increased manpower, increased unskilled labor. There's only so much you can do with that. If you don't invest in that human capital and you don't give them more machines and you don't give them other stuff to work with, then you're not necessarily going to get the payoff in terms of economic growth. And if you think about it in terms of labor that you see, you know, at any given store at any given time, you know, go to a bookstore on a weekday morning and look at how many people are standing around doing nothing. Does it help to throw more people at the problem if you already have people who are not being productive? 